got a tube bender. Let's see if it's any good. Let's check it out. All right, so on a closer look, this is an affordable bender. This is made to bend tubing. And the particular one I bought is, has it comes with an inch and a half die for bending DOM tubing. So it's more specifically, I'm building a roll case for this car and I believe this is the best thing for the job, especially with the price point. So I had this thing ordered and delivered to my house from Amazon.com, $350. And it comes basically just with everything you see here. Um, now, comparatively, you could also go for the JD Squared Tube Bender, which is also $350. However, it does not come with the die, so you're going to spend another $200 there. And there are some differences that might be worth it to you. So specifically, you get one die with this. This is an inch and a half die, like I said. It has a seven inch bending radius, so between the center or the fulcrum of the angle to the outside of the die, you're gonna have a, a seven inch radius, so it gives kind of a wider turn. And in some build, things that you're building, you may need a tighter radius and this won't work for you. <clears throat> the other possible downside to this particular model is this only bends 90 degrees. In certain applications, you're gonna to wanna to make different bends at 180 or even 360 degree bends and you can buy them but it just doesn't work with this particular model. So I'm going to show you a different closer look of how this thing's actually built. Okay so when you buy your affordable bender this is pretty much all you get. Just the unit itself, following, following wheel, the die that appears to be a cast model, but well, actually it seems to be pretty good quality. The nine ton bottle jack itself, which is a strong way, which I believe comes from Northern Tool Company. And you also get the bottle jack arm that goes with it. And that's pretty much it. So when you're looking at the die, it comes with these little groove marks on it, which obviously would be for some sort of degrees, but there are no numbers written on them. So we'll have to come back to that later. As far as the construction, eighth inch steel, sides, it's got some tube stock on the top, and this will focus. The welds are fairly decent on here. Now on the other hand, there is some gusseting where the roller goes, which is probably good. I'm going to show you the bottom of it. So, there is some unfinished business down here. That probably wasn't necessary to weld all those, but it probably would have been a looked a lot nicer at least. And if something does wind up fatiguing, I can come back later and weld those. Additionally, which kind of upset me was this part is also not welded all the way around and you can see that's at an angle. I just feel like there could have been some better craftsmanship there. Alright, let's get on to the degrees on this thing. So what this bender does not come with is this magnetic angle finder. This is basically just five dollars, got also from Amazon, so if you're going to be doing some accurate bends with this thing you might want to buy this also. And the way this works, you load your tube into the actual die you put this on the the die itself and if there wasn't any weight on it it does zero out now once this is zeroed out you put your material in here you start your bend and as it works its way through the bend you'll see the dial changing as the angle moves now there's pressure on that actual jack so for me to move it by hand this is how it will work all right let's discuss material Okay, so as we mentioned earlier, this machine is used to bend tubing. So right here I have two different pieces of material. One of these is tube, and another one is a pipe, which you really can't tell from the original eye, just at a glance. So these are both inch and a half. This one is the tubing, and you can see the difference if I can get the angle just right here with the lighting, but there is no seam weld inside of here. The other difference is, Tubing is well is measured on outer diameter, so the OD from here to here is an inch and a half. 
This on the other hand is pipe. This is an inch and a half pipe. However, the inch and a half is measured from the inside of it. And the other difference here is coming around if I can find. There is the seam weld. So that's another way that this is not structurally as sound as the DOM tubing. So the outer diameter of this is also measured to find out the weight of this. And is actually the outer is actually an inch and three quarters. It the inch inside the ID on these tubing, I'm sorry, pipe is inch and a half. So if you were to try to put this in your die on your tubing fender, there's absolutely no chance it'll fit. But not compatible with this machine at all. If you do want to use piping you can go to Harbor Freight and you can buy one of their tube kinkers for about $69. Okay so now we got our material we're ready to load this thing up and uh, get bending however this is where I want to find my first problem with this machine. So you roll your, your material into the die you bring out the whatever prescribed amount that you want to come out the other end of it and you're going to put on the actual tubing clamp itself. Now if you can see how this is looking this hole will not line up with this hole at all. This won't do it. Now you can sit here and try to maneuver these things until they do line up however it just won't happen you're going to be fighting with this the only thing I have figured out which does work take everything back out remove the follower pin completely take out the follower wheel and get that out of your way so now that that's out of the way come back in with your material Pipe clamp up. Now this gives you some wiggle room to kind of roll this pipe in the die to comp compare to where it meets the surface at. Once you've done that, you can line these holes up. Get that started. Put your follower bar in, and then you need to load this from underneath, which gets a little tricky. Alright, so there you go. Material is loaded in. We'll come back, tighten up this actual tubing clamp, and then we can start cutting. Now that we have our two foot test piece cut, we're going to load it in here. Alright, now that we're zeroed out, we'll see what this thing can do.
right, so that looks like 90 degrees. We're gonna take this thing out of the bender and see how the actual bend looks. All right, here's the outcome of that pipe. I just ran through that bending machine. Now it came up at 90 degrees in the bender and it did have some kind of spring back, so probably a little bit less than 90. However, I'm overall, overall I'm impressed. Really no kinking, no major concerns with this, so for what it's worth, I think it worked for my specific needs. Now, in other circumstances, this would have been nicer to have a tighter bend, but this is gonna work for what I'm doing. So let's get on to my last problem with the machine, and that is the degree indicators on the actual die. Okay, so while making that first bend with this machine, I did keep a close eye on these indicators and what they actually meant. And they did correlate to five degrees each line. So the bigger line are 10, and these are fives. And more confusingly, is this very first line. If you weren't paying attention, what you can't see and is underneath there. This very first line there is still zero. Then we go five, and then 10, so on all the way back around to the bottom one, which is, this is the 90. Now my solution to this is actually pretty simple and it mirrors what the JD square does. Going to drill a hole. Here we're gonna wrap around a piece of coat, wire coat hanger, bend it around to the indicator and we're gonna put it out to zero. So we'll get to that now. And simply enough, there it is. I just marked out all the degree indicators, drilled the hole through it, wrapped the wire around it, and it's currently marking at zero. And next time I go to bend, I'm gonna be able to at least get an eye and a visual. As I start working through the bend, you'll see the indicator is now at five, and then that'll be at almost 10, and then I run on tension off of the jack, so that'll also work for helping me out. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to complain about about this machine is it just goes along with the craftsmanship and quality control. The follower pin that I see here could go in two different locations. Now what this sticker is pretty much telling me is if I'm bending a smaller diameter tube, I will use this follower hole for one inch and an inch and a quarter. So I'm using this one. The sticker says inch and three quarters, inch and five eighths, and once again, inch and three quarters. So just, I believe what is a typo here, this particular number should be inch and a half, but we understand and we'll get over that. All right, overall, for the money, I believe this machine does work actually pretty well. Uh, once you figure out some of its little quirks, it's really no big deal at all. Just make sure you get yourself a magnetic angle finder. And once you tweak the machine to help you out visually while you're doing your bending. And if you're good with this 90 degree bends, overall this did a really good job. So I'm gonna quit wasting my time talking about this thing and I'm gonna get back to work on my roll cage. All right, thanks for watching. Hope this helped. See ya.